Hello, I'm Mason Summers, a biology major at Mount Vernon Nazarene University. This is my documentary project for my aquatic environments class. In this documentary, we will be speaking with Pima Tuning State Park Education Specialist Jared McGarry, as well as high school biology teacher and Pima Tuning native Mrs. Ann Simbor to learn more about non-native species, the surprising effects they've had on the reservoir, and what should be done about these organisms. I hope you find this documentary educational and informative. Let's get into it. This is Pima Tuning Reservoir. Located just south of Lake Erie in Northeast Ohio, Pima Tuning is the biggest man-made reservoir in both Ohio and Pennsylvania, being shared by the two states. The reservoir is huge, sitting at approximately 17,000 acres of water. It is a very popular tourist attraction, receiving over 3 million visitors every year. Pima Tuning is known for its camping, boating, and most of all, its fishing. It is home to many species of sport fish, such as muscalunge or muskie, walleye, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, white bass, bullhead catfish, channel catfish, black crappie, bluegill, yellow perch, and most famously, carp. In recent years, however, the introduction of non-native species has caused the ecosystem of Pima Tuning to change, for better and for worse. Many of the non-native species present in Pima Tuning have become invasive. Two invasive species of aquatic plants that have been introduced to the reservoir, Hydrilla and Eurasian water milfoil, are known to grow very quickly in thick mats. These plants grow so thick that they take over entire ecosystems, decreasing the availability of food to aquatic plants. They also block up sunlight to many species of native aquatic plants, therefore preventing photosynthesis from occurring. This not only kills off native plants, but also reduces the amount of oxygen in the water, suffocating many native fish species. Another invasive aquatic plant, European frogbit, is arguably even worse. Similar to the hydrilla and milfoil, frogbit also grows in thick mats and takes over entire ecosystems. However, unlike these invasive plants, European frogbit has a massive die-off every winter. The amount of decaying matter that this die-off produces attracts large amounts of bacteria. This bacteria absorbs much of the oxygen from the water. This is a process known as eutrophication, and by absorbing large amounts of oxygen out of the water, the bacteria slowly suffocate many native fish species. Invasive aquatic plants aren't the only invasive species Pima Tuning has to worry about. Invasive animals have also been detrimental to the reservoir's health. Many invasive species of snails, such as Chinese mystery snails and New Zealand mud snails, outcompete the native species of snails. Invasive fish, such as the white perch, eat the eggs of native sport fish, reducing their populations greatly. Overall, one of the biggest problems with Pima Tuning has been the presence of koi. To explain the dangers that koi have posed to Pima Tuning, I asked environmental education specialist Jared McGarry to provide an answer. And koi actually introduced a virus that killed off like 50 to 60 percent of the carp population called koi herpes virus. It only affected carp, but um, did, like, that's why you go to the spillway now. You don't see as many carp. There were a couple of viruses that killed quite a few of them off. Due to the introduction of the koi herpes virus, a large majority of the carp have disappeared, depriving Pima Tuning of one of its most prized fish species. While it is apparent how detrimental invasive species are to pima tuning, it leads to the question, how did all these invasives get into the reservoir? Again, we go to Jared for an explanation. When do you think all these um, species started showing up? Milfoil's been here a long time. Um, they started seeing that like in the 60s and 70s. Oh, okay. But here, I don't, I don't have specific notes saying this date is when we started seeing it, but milfoil was used a lot in aquariums. People used, and then they took the aquariums and like dumped them into the lake. Yeah. Um, which here, 
you know, we do get, we get the plants, we get the vegetation, but like another big invasive here is a problem is, is koi. People dump oh, koi yeah. in here all the time, the goldfish. The little goldfish. Because mm -hmm. that little goldfish will grow to whatever its environment is. Yeah. Um, I have a picture of me holding one up at Prescott, it was four or five pounds. While most of the invasives in Pima tuning are seemingly unrelated, they all have one thing in common. They were once used in aquariums. Hydrilla, milfoil, frogbit, Chinese mystery snails, New Zealand mud snails, and koi all came from fish tanks. These creatures got into the lake from people who either didn't want them anymore or just couldn't afford to take care of them. Instead of euthanizing or rehoming them, people dumped these creatures into the lake, hoping they would survive. They did more than survive, however. They thrived, leading to the invasive takeover Pima tuning is experiencing today. While the future of the reservoir may seem bleak, there are measures being taken to prevent and combat the spread of these invasive species. Well, how we deal with invasives here is we set up stations with interns. So um, two or three interns will be out here pretty much every weekend in the summertime going from different state, like different boat launches. And then if somebody pulls the boat out of the water, they'll check and make sure there's nothing on there. So they're not taking anything with them to other, to other lakes, to don't other lakes. There. Yeah. On the park. And we do that for usually from May until the end of August. Um, and then they do treat milfoil, they treat, or they treat hydrilla. Um, we do two lake vegetation surveys every year. So we go out with like 15 boats and we just plot points of where we think that this stuff's at. Um, we take a rake, like a double-sided rake with a line on it like this, throw it out and then you pull it in and you collect all the plants off of it. So we do that twice a year from the north end all the way down to the south end. Have you ever heard of Sea Grant, Pennsylvania Sea Grant? They're out of Erie mostly, but their job is mostly like invasive prevention, invasive targeting. Um, so they even have a day now where you can bring in like a goldfish or a turtle or whatever, and they'll either rehome it or euthanize it. Because for years, I mean, people just, oh, my turtle's too big, you know, it, it, it got way bigger than what I thought it was, I'm gonna get rid of it, they just dump it in the lake. Same thing with a goldfish, you know? And yeah. Then all of a sudden you got four pound goldfish swimming around, <laughs> which is crazy, or you have these giant koi that are in here now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, Every, it, it's never a bad intention thing. Like people aren't like, oh, I just want to get milfoil or I want to get uh, yeah. you know, zebra mussels in here, but they're it does purpose, happen. They're not purposely putting it. It's just... Right. While the park rangers are hard at work removing the invasives, we can also do our part. If you ever encounter any invasive species, make sure to remove them from the reservoir and properly dispose of them. Clean and empty your boat of any tag along organisms. By practicing these good habits, you can help prevent and eliminate invasive species. Make sure that you can identify the dangers invasives pose and protect the future of Pymatuning Reservoir and other rivers and lakes near you. Many times the term non-native species is synonymous with the term invasive species. However, non-native species don't always become invasive. Sometimes, they can have unexpected results. According to the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, the past introduction of one species of fish has changed the reservoir dramatically. The alewife, a small species of fish native to the east coast of the United States, found its way to Lake Erie through the Erie Canal, which connected the Atlantic to the Great Lakes. Somehow, in the early 2000s, a small population of alewives made it to Pima Tuning Reservoir from Lake Erie. In 2013, for reasons unknown to this day, the population of alewives in the reservoir exploded, making food more accessible to the fish in Pima Tuning and creating healthier fish in the process. The populations of top predators like walleye, bass, and muskie grew exponentially due to the greater availability of food. The smaller fish species, like crappie, yellow perch, and bluegill, also grew in population,
thanks to the top predators mostly eating alewives instead of these smaller fish. Another big change the alewife has contributed to pyme tuning is bald eagles. Here we have pyme tuning native and local biology teacher Mrs. Simbor to talk about how the populations of eagles have grown since she was little. Having lived right on Pyme Tuning Lake your whole life, um, what changes have you noticed with the lake? Well, the biggest one I've noticed, and I've said this to people numerous times, is when I was growing up, we rarely saw bald eagles. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a huge deal to see a bald eagle. I remember my mom getting so excited, you know, if we, she saw one. And if you really wanted to see one, you had to go to the north end of the lake, which is all game preserve. And now they're everywhere. Like, mm -hmm. If I'm outside for more than an hour, I'm going to see at least one eagle fly by or perch on a tree, and you hear them all the time, so they're wow. just everywhere. Since the alewives caused fish populations to increase, Pymatuning Reservoir has become a hot spot for eagles, with a whopping 12 documented nests right on the water. Compare that to the 1980s when there were only two nests. Thanks to the introduction of the alewife to Pymatuning, the reservoir's ecosystem has been able to support larger populations of sport fish, changing the ecology of the reservoir forever. As a consequence of the introduction of non-native species into pyme tuning, the reservoir will never be the same. The presence of non-native species in pyme tuning is a testament to the destructive yet creative power humanity has over nature. It serves as a lesson to us to wield this power responsibly, to protect the future of the environment and to allow future generations to enjoy it, just as we do today. This is Mason Summers. Thank you. All right.